Good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick at Holy Shepherd Lutheran Church. Today is Tuesday. It's August the 2nd. And I'm Deaconess Intern Claire. And we're doing the litany today, which is found in Lutheran Service Book on page 288. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, good Lord. From all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord. To rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To raise those who fall, and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort and to help the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all of our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness and their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and to keep all sick persons and all young children, to free those in bondage and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, to graciously to bear, to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus, Christ, Son of God. We implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. O Christ. Hear us. O Lord. Have mercy. O Christ. Have mercy. O Lord. Have mercy. Amen. All right, and our devotion today is going to be a continuation. In the book of Acts, chapter 26, we are starting at verse 24. At this point, Festus interrupted Paul's defense. You're out of your mind, Paul, he shouted. Your great learning is driving you insane. I am not insane, most excellent Festus, Paul replied. What I am saying is true and reasonable. The king is familiar with these things, and I can speak freely to him. I am convinced that none of this has escaped his notice because it was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you do. Then Agrippa said to Paul, do you think that in such a short time you can persuade me to be a Christian? Paul replied, short or long, I pray God that not only you, but all who are listening to me today because may become what I am except for these chains. The king rose and with him the governor and Bernice and those sitting with them, they left the room, and while talking with one another, they said, this man is not doing anything that deserves death or imprisonment. Agrippa said to Festus, this man could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. When it was decided that we would sail for Italy, Paul and some other prisoners were handed over to a centurion named Julius, who belonged to the Imperial Regiment. We boarded a ship from Adramitium, about to sail for ports along the coast of the province of Asia, and we put out to sea. Aristarchus, a Macedonian from Thessalonica, was with us. The next day, we landed at Sidon, and Julius, in kindness to Paul, allowed him to go to his friends that they might provide for his needs. From there, 
we put to sea again and passed to the lee of Cyprus because the winds were against us. When we had sailed across the open sea off the coast of Cilicia and Pamphyla, we landed at Myra and Lycia. There the centurion found an Alexandrian ship sailing for Italy and put us on board. We made slow headway for many days and had difficulty arriving off Cnidus. When the wind did not allow us to hold our course, we sailed to the Lee of Crete, opposite Salmo, Salmon, or Salmone. We moved along the coast with difficulty, came to a place called Fair Havens, near the town of Lycia. All right, so this is a continuation of, it's not really a trial, um, because Agrippa is not really questioning Paul the way that Pilate questioned Jesus, but it's more of a, a hearing. Now, by this point, Paul has already appeared to Caesar, so he's already going to be going to Rome. But I think Agrippa has a curiosity about what Paul has to say. Um, Agrippa was in such a position that he actually had the ability to appoint the high priest for the temple in Jerusalem. He was familiar with Jewish customs and beliefs. And, and this is why Paul says, do you believe the prophets? I know that you do. So uh, Agrippa has some familiarity with Judaism. I, I don't know that I would say he is a Jew, although Paul implies that, that he does have um, some sense of regard for the Old Testament prophets. And we talked about what that meant yesterday, that the prophets, like say in Isaiah 53, um, also you could look at David in uh, the 16th Psalm, where there is this notion that a resurrection is predicted in the Old Testament. And so he's making his appeals to, to Agrippa on those grounds. And, um, you know, here he is saying uh, in response to Agrippa's, do you think you can make me a Christian in a short time? Uh, it's, it's my hope that not only you, but everybody who hears me. And after that, Agrippa gets up and leaves the room. And, and there are some commentators who say that this was Agrippa's hour of grace, that this was the time the gospel was being proclaimed to him personally. And, and he responds to the gospel by rejecting it, that he gets up and he leaves the room, and that with that, he also um, leaves behind his own salvation um, in that very moment. And so he goes out and he talks with Bernice and he talks with Festus, and um, you know the, the conclusion there is that, well, if Paul had not appealed to Caesar, um, he could have been dismissed. Because once the appeal to Caesar was done, it could not be retracted. Um, it, it could, Paul could not just take it back. And so they send him on to Rome, and uh, he, he, Paul goes to Rome with someone named Aristarchus, who is mentioned um, previously in Acts and is also found at the end of Philemon. And then um, and Philemon is one of Paul's imprisonment letters. And it, it's also believed that, that Luke, the gospel writer Luke, is with him, also at this time going to Rome. Now, Luke is special because not only does he write the gospel and not only does he write this book of Acts, which is why he has all of these details because he's there for part of the story, um, but Luke is also the only one who is with Paul at the very end. Um, and we find his name mentioned in 2 Timothy, at the end of 2 Timothy, when Paul says, Luke alone is with me. So, uh, like I said, it's thought that Luke is going along with Paul and Aristarchus in this journey to Rome. And, and they're having a hard time getting there because the wind is against them, and they're obviously in a sailing vessel. And uh, they're trying to sail north on the coast because they're leaving um, Caesarea, which is just north of Jerusalem. And they're going to be sailing for Sidon and then up the coast to Antioch. And so they're, they're kind of hopping from port to port on land. And the ship that they're in um, is only capable of doing that. It's not really a ship that is seaworthy for going out into sea um, as opposed to just port hopping. Um, but they're going to catch another ship that, that does have better capability and, and be put on that. And um, we get quite a bit of detail here from Luke, as we, you know, maybe are not surprised by, because he does compile all of this information uh, that we hear about at the beginning of his gospel for Theophilus uh, and the eyewitness accounts. So maybe that's why we're, we're getting so much, um, maybe even more detail than we need about this journey from Caesarea all the way to Rome. Uh, but Paul now has had the opportunity to proclaim the resurrection um, before Festus and before Bernice and before Agrippa. And uh, we believe that he's going to do the same to Caesar, that Caesar also might hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right, let's continue now as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Everyone, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you, give you his peace. Amen. All right, Claire, what announcements do you have for us today? Um, well, we have youth night tonight at 6, and I believe we have Mahjong tomorrow at 10 in the morning. Um, and that's all I got for right now. Okay, and then uh, this coming Saturday, we have men's breakfast going on at 8 a.m., followed by the elders meeting at 9.30. Uh, the council meeting for this month has yet to be determined, so stay tuned for uh, some more news about that. Uh, we'll be having some important news in our email newsletter that's going to be sent out later today. Um, so I, I definitely would invite you to read that. If you're not getting that, um, if you would please just reach out to me or Claire and just let us know. Um, we've had some people this week that um, made mention of that, and, and so we will, we're definitely trying to make sure that they um, are put on the list and that you are all receiving that. So um, you can just uh, let us know. So that's all the answers I have for today. Thank you for watching our daily devotions. God bless you, and we'll see you tomorrow.